such as you all. So thank you so much. Um, after um, our meeting today, I'd welcome any specific scholarship questions at any time. Please reach out to me for any scholarship questions. But today we're going to focus on the new tool that we have. And Steph Schneider is here from Foundant to help walk us through and demonstrate the tool. And um, at this point, I would love to turn it over to Steph, and we will also make this recording available later for those of you who cannot attend today. So Steph, let me know if, if you have full functionality to share your screen there. I should be. We're going to try here in just a moment. <laughs> Uh, so hi everyone, thanks for joining. Uh, as Heidi mentioned, uh, my name is Steph Schneider from Foundant Technologies. Um, I support the scholarship lifecycle management uh, technology and the grant lifecycle manager technology uh, that St. Croix Valley Foundation uh, has been using to process grants and scholarships. Um, Heidi has been putting a lot of work into getting this system set up for your applicants, uh, processing them, and then getting them all set up for um, you all to capture your evaluation information in it as well. And so that's what I'm going to dive into today is how do you get logged into the system? How do you navigate it? How do you view applications, fill out your evaluation, um, et cetera. Um, so I'm gonna be demoing a few things, but if you have any questions at any time, feel free to interrupt me. Um, I am happy to sideline and answer questions mid presentation. So with that, I will try that screen share. All right, and is everybody able to see my screen over here? Okay, um, so this is what it will look like uh, when you log in. Um, so Heidi's going to be sending out an email to let you know when your evaluations are ready to complete. Um, she's included a hyperlink that will take you right to this dashboard. Um, for your first time logging on, uh, because Heidi's already set you up as users in the system, you will click this blue forgot your password. And then you'll just go ahead and enter the email address uh, where you received that email from, um, reset your password from there, and then you can get logged in to go into your um, evaluator dashboard. Um, so when you will actually be working, you will be in this site here. This is what we call our live site. Uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to be hopping into what's called a sandbox site, which is our testing environment so that we're not having to work with uh, real applications uh, in this demonstration. So with that, um, over here, I'm in the Sandbox site. Um, I'm logged in as an evaluator. Um, I'm in here as Evan Evaluator. Um, and this is what your dashboard will look like. Um, so we have our uh, little house icon here. If you ever get lost in the site, you're not sure where you are or what you clicked and you just need to get back to this view, anytime you click this little house icon, um, it will drop you right back there. Um, if Heidi ever mentions that she has shared documents within the system for you to look at, I don't believe there's any currently in there, but if she ever mentions that in the future, that's you can access it here in the shared documents tab. Um, on this dashboard, there's a little language here that kind of reminds you of how to complete the evaluations here. And if you ever need a detailed tutorial, there is a hyperlink here that brings you right to an article. Um, there's a video tutorial that you can walk through step by step. Um, you all are set up as a staff evaluator role in here, although you may not all be staff members. Um, that's the name of the in-system role that kind of sets your permissions. Um, so you'd want to watch that top video, and then there are written instructions with screenshots below. So if you ever need a refresher in anything that I'm talking about today, we have those in-system resources. Okay, so how does this actually work? Um, I'm in here as, again, an evaluator, and I am someone who is sitting on the Sturbin's Ryan Scholarship Fund uh, Committee uh, for Fund 2. Um, and I'm also sitting on a committee for the Hudson Physicians Scholarship Fund. Um, I don't know that you all have a lot of crossover, but for this demo, that is what I am at the moment. Um, and see here, I have three different applicants. Uh, these are play applications. So I had a little bit of fun setting up those applicants. Um, and this is really where we want to go. Um, so if we want to start our first evaluation for Max Gu for his uh, Hudson Physician Scholarship Fund, we would just click Start. And this is what the screen is going to look like. Um, so we have the contact info. This is our applicant information. Um, by default, your evaluation form that you're being asked to fill out will be on the left, and the application of this applicant will be on the right. 
If you ever decide that you want to see the view in the other way, where you have the application on the left, evaluation on the right, you can do so by clicking these two little arrows. And you can also scroll independently on each of these windows. So if you want to hop through the application, you are more than welcome to. Also a few other things here. Um, so this window, we're looking at the application. Say that you prefer to have a printed out version where you can scribble some notes down. You can generate a PDF version of this application here by clicking application packet and it will download as a PDF. So you can see all of the answers that they had filled out on the application. Um, same with this evaluation packet. So if you want to see all of these evaluation questions in a PDF format, you can download that the same here. Um, but otherwise, um, you just kind of go through and um, answer the questions as you see fit. Uh, Heidi's done a great job of providing you some guidance and rubrics of what different scores mean for uh, various questions. Um, so we can scroll down and look for work experience. Uh, there's a question here in the application. Um, so this applicant didn't have any work experience. So we're going to go ahead and give them a zero here. Um, career goals related to the healthcare field. Um, Max Goof wants to work as a radiation tech. Um, and so, but he didn't maybe have a very strong essay on it. So maybe we wouldn't um, rate him very high. Um, also within the application, uh, you'll see that there are some file upload questions. So here um, they're being asked to upload their high school transcript. I didn't have a high school transcript handy, so I just uploaded a PDF document. Um, but if we wanted to see what this upload look like, looks like, you can either click on the link and it will download to your computer, or you can click this little eyeball icon and it will open up what's called the document viewer. And you can see what's actually been uploaded. Um, in this instance, I just uploaded a syllabus document. Um, but in your actual application, that should be a high school transcript. Um, if you also want to see all document uploads at once, you can click this document viewer. So it is the same view as clicking this little eyeball icon when you see it associated with the question but it opens up all documents that would be attached to a request. If there were more than one document, you would see them listed here. And again, you're able to download this document separately to your computer from here. All right, um, so as so we scroll down, let's say that we got part of the way through this evaluation. We got distracted with some other work, so we just wanted to save and maybe come back in later. What does that look like? Um, so when we hit save, we have the option to hop to our next evaluation or return to our dashboard. Again, this button, return to dashboard, same functionality as clicking this little home icon. So notice the status bar has changed. So at the beginning, we had three pending evaluations because we didn't start anything. Now we have two pending and one in draft, which associate down here. And they are more than just pretty color icons. So if I just wanted to look at my app, the applications that I had started to evaluate, I can click the yellow bar. If I want to see the ones that were only pending, or if I want to stop that view and I want to see everything again, you can click the colors again, or you can click the home icon to reset. It's just a way of sorting. So let's go back in and continue our evaluation for Max Goof. I'm just going to choose some arbitrary numbers here. All right. Okay, and now we can see that this one is complete. And so we could continue going down through and you know, completing our evaluation here, completing our evaluation here. We essentially want to get all of them in the complete status. That's when we know that we finished all of the required questions in an evaluation form. Now, there are some optional questions in there. So uh, Heidi has given you some space to just take notes in here, um, either for yourself or to share with other evaluators, to share with her. Um, and so this can just be a good place to drop in notes that you don't necessarily wanna hold in your head the whole time after you're looking at all of those scholarship applications. Um, and notice here that I never hit submit. There is only a save button on these evaluations. So say that I had looked at a few other uh, students applications and I decided, you know, what, after reviewing this pool of students, I think that Max maybe wasn't as strong in financial need or career goals as we initially thought. And I want to update my answers. You can do so at any time during the evaluations open period. 
Um, and now uh, we also have a score populating here. So this is an auto calculated score of the number of points that we had selected on that form divided by the total number of points on that form. Um, we are able to sort on any of these columns as well. Um, so if we wanna make sure that all of our Sturbin's Ryan Scholarship Fund two applications are together, we can do so here. Or once we have all of our scores, we will be able to sort on that score column as well. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> I think that's um, about the extent of what I have to show you with the tool, uh, unless there were some questions. Um, there's obviously lots of little pieces and icons that you saw along the way where you can dig into some information, but um, that's um, basically the evaluation tool, <laughs> as straightforward as I can say it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Steph. Karen, it looked like you might have a question. Right. I had, um, first of all, I think that looks amazing. So thank you, Steph and Heidi. I think that's going to be really super slick and easy to use. So fantastic. Um, on our committee, you know, we, or probably all of them, there's a number of reviewers. Do we all use that tool together? And then, you know, for instance, on our committee, we have four reviewers. Do all four of us enter them separately, or is this designed for us only when we've uh, compiled them all together? Yeah, so, um, and Heidi, please correct me if I'm wrong, um, but I'd imagine um, all four individuals on that committee would receive access to capture your evaluations, um, because this gives you visibility to the applications and you can kind of capture those first impression answers. Uh, within the evaluation tool. Um, so each one of you would have those submitted responses. And Heidi, from her administrator view, can see all of those responses. She's able to pull them into report and really pull that all together. Mm -hmm. Do we yes. want, yeah, so that I suppose that would be a question we need to think about. Do we want four separate scoring showing or do we just want the one final in which, you know, is there a way to say only look at this one person's and not the other three? That would be very different than our usual committee practice, which is to sit and discuss each criteria and then um, come to a consensus mm -hmm. and then move on. So that would be a very different approach. On the other hand, it would uh, enable us to each review, right now we review some of them at home and then come together and talk about the controversial ones or the questionable ones or the et cetera. Um, that would enable each of the individuals to keep their stuff, but I'm wondering if we want you to be able to see all four of our different scoring at all. So maybe you don't have to decide today. It's just a food for thought, maybe one. Yes. Karen, why don't you and I connect um, after this about exactly what would work best for your committee? But um, Steph, correct me if I'm wrong, but just imagine each of their four committee members all scored in the way that you just demonstrated then are they able to get together and adjust those scores based on their conversations? Um, that's, in my understanding, they're able to do that as well. Absolutely, yeah. So Heidi, in order for them to um, update their scores, uh, you would just leave the evaluations open like they are now. Okay. Um, so it is, uh, I see clients commonly do this where uh, they will assign out the evaluations. The evaluators will take some time uh, or committee members will take some time to look at those applications, put their first impressions down in their evaluation scores, and then they'll come together and discuss that. Um, because sometimes it isn't just the highest scoring student that would necessarily be awarded that scholarship. There's some of that human component of getting a feel for that applicant and the intent of that scholarship fund and having that direct match. Um, so some folks will leave the evaluations open for those committee members so that all of you can come to consensus and reflect that in the system. Other clients will close those evaluations so that the initial responses are captured. Um, and then just uh, one person from that committee will serve as the 
conduit of communication back to Heidi to say, of all of these evaluation scores, we're actually awarding this student or these two students or whatnot. Um, so there's lots of different ways that you can do it. Um, some of the benefit of having those first impressions captured in the system is sometimes those students that wouldn't necessarily be advocated for kind of bubble up to the top. Um, and you might discuss students in a different way when you're all not together coming to consensus from the start. Um, so yeah, totally up to you, but those are some options. Great, thank you. Yeah. Um, two other questions then. One, when we do reach our final decisions, is is that, do we, you know, you said there's no submit. Do we just tell Heidi, okay, look at this one and this is our final decisions? Or how do we get, communicate that information? Yeah, so there are a couple of different ways. Uh, you could just, yeah, uh, shoot Heidi an email as soon as you've uh, come up with that final decision. Or uh, Heidi, we could also discuss adding um, an optional question at the end that each committee head maybe fills out before that evaluation is closed as this is the designated person's evaluation form to look at uh, for with that final decision information. So again, there are some options uh, and we can adjust that in the system for whichever way you decide to go. Um, if you have initial thoughts, Heidi, I'm also happy to speak to those uh, right now and kind of what that workflow would look like. Yeah, I, I think um, you actually mentioned a couple of new options that I, I wasn't aware of that sound really interesting. Karen, um, I'll give you a follow-up call after this and, um, and we'll chat to make sure um, it works for your team, for sure. Right. And my last question was when, if we click PDF, for us, there's some interest. Well, the question is, does it bring up a picture of what they actually submitted so if they hand wrote it out, do we get to see that handwritten piece of it for the uploaded document? Yes. Um, yeah. So if we generate the, I'm not sure which of these I clicked first. So I'm going to freshly generate the application packet here. And so this PDF version, it has your cover page with just some basic information, applicant name. And then here's each of the questions. Um, and the little red asterisk means that it's a required question, uh, but to get to your question about uh, file uploads, notice this is our question asking about the file upload. We don't necessarily see anything right here with that upload. All file uploads are found at the end of this document. So if they had written a, you know, a handwritten note of some sort that they uploaded into that document question, you would be able to see that at the end here. And so, so, oh, go ahead, Craig. Okay, uh, so, that's good. Just a question. You know, right now they turn in their applications on paper. This is a reviewing tool, but is this also a submittal tool? Do, do students use Absolutely. this to their applications, or will they come as they have on paper in the past? Yes, I can feel that one. Craig, yeah, the, the students have all applied online this year. There are there are a few that, that you will see when you get the document viewer that they have submitted notes outside of that, but students have actually been responding really positively about having this tool this year to apply. And so what you are seeing is the same portal they log into to apply is the same portal that you all will log into to review. So it's working out pretty well in that sense. That's great. That's wonderful. And I'm, I'm impressed that they all know how to upload documents then too, because that's not an everyday thing, I don't think. So that's really good. Yeah, there have been a, there have been a handful of times where students or recommenders have emailed me PDFs and then I go ahead and upload those to their file for them. So. Yeah, you're right. There has been a, there has been a little handholding, but not as much as I anticipated. Um, students have really, um, especially the younger ones, have really found this quite easy. Perfect. Thanks. And I also want to shout out to Heidi for that. She has been really great about polishing up this application with clear communication and working outside of the system to capture some of those. Um, out of system uh, functions to get everything in this portal so that you all have an easier time reviewing as well. Um, so yeah, with that, uh, any other questions about uh, the actual 
tool itself that I can answer any process questions before I let you all chat about any other questions related to funds committees, internal, <laughs> whatnot. Again, I'm super impressed. Thank you that this, I think this will really streamline our work nicely and make a lot of things really easy in comparison. Great. I love to hear that. Uh, and if you come across anything that doesn't work well for you, that feels difficult to work with, please pass that feedback along to Heidi and she can pass that to us. Uh, so our software is constantly evolving to get better and better to make it easier to use for our applicants, our evaluators, our administrators. Uh, and there are things that Heidi can tweak along the way. Uh, this is the very first shot of getting everything into an online system. I think she's done a phenomenal job, but there's always room for improvement. So keep that feedback coming. Um, and yeah, I, I hope that this does help to streamline uh, your evaluations process so that you can spend more time just getting money to the students who need it. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Steph. Really appreciate your help. And uh, I'll be in touch with, with more questions as always. But thank you so much. I'm sure we can let you hop off and support other folks now. And I'll chat with you soon. Great. Yeah. 